Today we're testing this 3D sculpt filament that you can heat up after you finish printing to sculpt it like clay. I'm always looking for new and interesting filaments and this one really caught my eye. It's called 3D Sculpt from Form Futura. You can print with it like normal, but afterwards, if you heat up the surface to 70 degrees, you're meant to be able to manipulate it just like clay. I've had quite an adventure trying this out, and I've definitely made some mistakes. So in this video, I'll take you through my testing and show you what I've learned. So if you do try this filament, you should have much more success than I did. I think someone a lot more skilled than me could get a lot out of this filament for printing props and cosplay items, so I'm interested to see what you think. So here we have the filament in question, it's called 3D Sculpt by Form Futura. For a 750 gram roll, it's 85 Australian, which is around US $60. The default colour is light grey, but it also comes in gold as well as copper. It's more expensive than regular filament, but it does have some pretty interesting claims. Looking at these images gives us an idea on what we can expect. In this first one, the user is sculpting it like it was wet clay. With the dinosaur here, they're carving into the surface which is very smooth with no layer lines. And finally we have a bust where support has been removed, the model has been visibly smoothed and then painted to a really high standard. The description gives us more details, with the main one being that if we heat up our model to 70 degrees Celsius, it will be somewhat like clay and allow us to re-sculpt and remodel. One of the best aspects is that we should be able to get rid of our layer lines as well as any other imperfections. This means we can get things very smooth or the surface will be soft enough to add our own textures. One nice claim is that unlike clay, this won't deteriorate over time, it won't dry out and crack, and we can even reuse waste materials such as support structures in new sculptures. As for the printing, it looks very similar to PLA, with a hot end temp between 190 to 220 and a bed temp between 45 to 60. And here is my test roll, in my case I'm using the gold colour, and the feeling of it is quite interesting. It's very flexible but it doesn't feel rubbery like TPU. In fact you can bend it right back on itself and there's no crazing or deterioration, it doesn't feel like it's going to snap at all. So let's have a look at how I intend to test this out. I'm a big fan of flowalistic low poly models, so I'm going to print this Charmander and see if I can turn it from low poly into quite smooth. We'll see if we can get rid of the layer lines as well as take the edges off all of those triangles. I'm also going to print this IO bust. It looks fairly smooth, but I'm going to see if I can get rid of layer lines and then maybe add back in some texture like we saw on the website. I feel this filament will perhaps be of most interest to people who print props and cosplay items. Therefore, I've selected this mask and it should give me a good opportunity to set up some support structures to see how well they separate and how easy it is to clean up the underside. Finally, we have this hand. You can imagine printing this with any position other than what is shown. It's going to need a lot of support material. So I wanted to see if I could print the hand and then sculpt it into a different position after the fact. One of the questions I wanted to answer was how easy is this filament to print with? For most of these prints, I kept a pretty standard 0.2mm layer height. This first one was printed on the CR6, and I started with a hot end temp of 210 degrees and a heated bed temperature of 60 degrees. And at these temperatures, the print commenced without issue, but I would soon discover that temperature was quite important once the print was finished. When the bed was cooling down, I couldn't remove the print and I noticed it had a kind of fluid layer at the base. The lower portion of the model had stuck extremely well, so well that even after the ultra base style bed of the CR6 had completely cooled, it was very hard to remove this object. After spending a solid 5 minutes with a flat blade, it finally came loose, but it didn't really detach as you would expect. It was more that I'd sliced off the lower layers, which were now missing from the underside of the model. With some delicate scraping, I was at least able to clean all of the filament off the glass bed. I decided to switch to a printer with a flexible build platform and therefore I switched to my Ender 3. For this bust, I lowered the hot end temperature from 210 to 200 degrees and I also turned down the layer height to 0.12 millimeters. The bust printed fine apart from the very top where my part cooling wasn't up to the job and all that remains are blobs stacked on top of each other. 
The build surface in place was an Epiflex PEI powder coated spring steel sheet and it seemed to be working in removing the print although I had to flex the plate quite an extreme amount. At 60 degrees it had still stuck extremely well and with enough pulling I eventually got it off but it also removed some of the powder coating. At least the other side of this plate is still usable. Next up was the mask and I lowered my hot end to 190 and the bed temperature to only 50 degrees. I also manually placed support underneath the whole front row of teeth and I joined them all up so they wouldn't topple over. I switched to a Wham Bam PEX sheet and 50 degrees for that was too low with the print detaching. I upped the temperature to 60 in the G-code and reprinted and this time it peeled off quite well. It still sticks as if there's a layer of glue or something underneath but it was very manageable to separate the object. Finally the hand back to 0.2mm layer height, a nozzle temp of 190 and I experimented with the bed at 56 degrees. This print stuck well and separated cleanly. So how are the test prints before post-processing? I've noticed on all of them that there are little blobs on the underside and therefore really strong part cooling is of great importance for this filament. When the layers are stacked more or less vertically, they come out quite clean, but I've noticed when they're shallower, like on the head here, they are much more prominent. I also noticed that there's an area along the bottom of each print where the heat from the heated bed seems to melt or slightly deform the plastic during printing. Overall, I'd say this filament is fairly easy to get good results with, but to get excellent results, you're gonna to need to experiment with both hot end and bed temperature. Onto the main event, the post-processing. And the main tool I'll be using for heating is this cordless heat gun and various attachments, but I'll also be experimenting with a kettle to see how boiling water goes for softening the plastic. In terms of tools for manipulation, I've got this AMX 3D support removal tools. I think they're gonna be ideal. They have a variety of shapes, some smooth, some round, and they come with a full set of X-Acto blades. My first test subject is the Charmander, and you may wish to avert your eyes for what is about to happen. I started with the heat gun and a medium width nozzle, and I found that it heated up pretty quickly. Here it is with thermal imaging and it probably took less than a minute to get up to the required 70 degrees Celsius on this side of the model. Even though only touched on 70, you can see a big wrinkle starting to form on the side of the face. I tried to use the smoothest and rounded tool that I could to see if I could smooth out the layer lines. I had limited success so I moved to another part of the model with the heat gun. As I continued to try and smooth, things just got worse and worse. The model just collapsed in on itself. It was clear it didn't have sufficient integrity to withstand this type of abuse. No turning back now, so I applied some more heat with the aim of discovering just how pliable it was. The answer was very, and I also discovered I didn't need the gloves. In fact, they were more of a hindrance than a help. My first test was done, and it ended up looking like this. It seems my Charmander could not handle the heat. It was at this stage that I went to the Form Futura website and discovered this printing guide video. I had most of the settings correct, but the two that were sadly lacking were the five shells instead of three and the 25% or higher infill. I approached this like a typical PLA print, and that means when it gets really hot, there's just not enough heft in the model to prevent total deformation. My goal for the hand was to deform it into a different pose, so let's see how that went. The first thing I did was try the heat gun to get rid of the stringing and that worked quite well. After that I put on the kettle and filled up a ceramic bowl. I don't know about you but to me this looks insanely cool through the thermal camera. If you watch the spot temperature reading on the right you'll see we hit just under 100 degrees celsius. I then popped in the hand and gave it a minute or so to heat up and hopefully soften. The first thing I tried was some smoothing of layer lines, but then I noticed the fingers were starting to curl backwards, so I figured I'd better get to work on those. I applied a little bit of pressure, trying to form natural creases where they would be in a real hand, and I worked through them one at a time, folding them down into a fist configuration. As you can see, the width of each finger naturally got wider. It looks a little bit unnatural, but I was able to make a thumbs up shape. I reapplied parts of the shape that I wanted to keep working on back into the hot water. My aim was to form a crease in the palm and bend the outside fingers in to mimic how it would look in a real hand. 
my success was limited with this. From some angles it looks okay, from others not so much, but at least I did have success using a flat tool to reinstate the creases in between the fingers. Here's the before and here is the after. Not perfect, but probably limited by my skill more than the filament. Next up was the mask and my aim was to cleanly remove the support and see how much I could remove the ley lines. The support removal went well. In fact, I was able to remove all of it with my bare hands. It doesn't snap away in a crisp fashion like you would expect with PLA. The underside of the front teeth still needed a bit of attention, so I continued the post-processing. I applied some heat via the heat gun on the inside of the mask, and this softened things quite a bit, but with this amount of stringing I had trouble removing it cleanly. One thing that did work as advertised was the easy removal of little wisps and strings with the X-Acto blade. The blade goes cleanly through, and it's hard to describe what it's like to slice this stuff. It's not stiff like Brutal PLA, it's kind of like a really dense meat, kind of like salami. I was also able to quickly and efficiently trim off imperfections along the front of the chin. It's definitely a lot easier than other filaments when it comes to doing this type of cutting. As for smoothing the layer lines, I heated up only the right hand side because I wanted to do a side by side comparison to show before and after. Now this model is a lot thinner and therefore more solid. So I was able to apply pressure from the backside and then use my fingers to rub and try and smooth out the layer lines. This actually worked quite well a lot of the time, but it still collapsed and left some wrinkles in the hollower sections. Again, I was easily able to use tools to reapply some of the creases in the face that had been lost by my finger rubbing. And here's the final comparison with this side being the original model with layer lines and this side being the side that I tried to smooth. The layer lines are definitely less visible, you can see particularly on the nose here, but the model has also been deformed. It looks a lot more like bronze coloured clay afterwards, right down to my fingerprints left in the surface. Finally, this guy, and I apologise to the creator of this model for what is about to happen. I started by using a blade to trim off any of the larger blobs and zits. Even without heating the model up, this is easy to do by hand. I then used the heat gun in an attempt to heat up only smaller portions of the model at any one time. One of my aims for this one was to manipulate the surface and add in more texture such as wrinkles, although I found things greatly improved when I used an appropriate tool for the job. This particular tool was quite effective at putting in some forehead lines, but you can see the forehead is crushing in a little bit as I do it, and again this would have been fixed if I printed this model with much higher infill. I also had a similar problem with the neck. At this point I remembered the claim that you could reuse and sculpt waste support material. So I got to work with blade and scissors preparing small sections of the support material to become hair for the model. With a narrow nozzle on the heat gun I found it was particularly easy to heat up the two localized areas before carefully picking up the small new piece and pressing it into place on the main model. For some of the thinner sections, I found that if I heated it up on the mat, I could then use my finger while it was warm to roll it into a desired shape, in this case, a wispy moustache. In this instance, it really did feel a lot like manipulating clay. I was kind of on a roll, so I continued on with the support material and decided to give it a full head of hair. Again, I would heat one end of the hair and then heat the area on the model where I wanted to attach it. The hardest part was probably picking up the hair without squishing all of the strands together with my fingers. Once it was in place, I could use the heat gun to heat up the tips and manipulate them further. After adding a few more layers, my creation was complete. Because of the low infill, some areas on this model have completely caved in and been ruined, but in terms of the hair, I feel I've achieved something here that would be near impossible to 3D print. I felt like I was just starting to get the hang of it, but someone with a lot more skill than me would be able to get out a pretty good result with this filament. So here's a summary of what I've learned. Print with a hot end temp as low as possible, print with thick walls and high infill to preserve the model, and also print with as low a layer height as possible as the layer lines are still hard to eliminate afterwards. The rest is all about practice and planning. Rather than experimenting like I did, going with the plan and heat up specific areas at a time, manipulating those and knowing that your skills will increase as you have more experience. 
So there's my results, and although I think they're interesting, I'll be the first to admit that the limiting factor in this equation was definitely me. I think a lot of my problems would have been avoided if I had printed with thicker walls and a lot higher percentage infill, because that should have stopped the objects from collapsing in on themselves when heated up. If you think this would be a useful filament for you to try, please let me know down below in the comments. Also let me know if you were entertained by my epic failures. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.